So I'm going to pull this one apart now and turn it uh, into a, a prop powered boat. It'll probably run on half voltage. It'll probably run the same speed as this actually did on 6S. So I'm going to use the same motor out of this. Um, the grub screws just come out of it. And that's, that's what ended the run the other day. So I'm going to run the same motor um, and mount it here. So I'm just going to throw a motor mount in here. Um, take this off, mount this over here. Just run a shaft down to a strut over here. So I have a few things from stock. Um, I'm just going to use this simple mount here rather than the one with the sides. Um, I don't know, about there I guess, something like that. Um, it's got a strut here, I want to keep it black. So I've just got a strut off an M41 Traxxas, one of our 316 ones. It should be okay. Turn fin, the ones they use on these are about, probably not even half the size of this. They, they might be, yeah, they might be half the length and, and half the, the width I guess. Um, I don't know, I'm going to have to figure out something with a bracket. Uh, this is a bracket for a rudder actually. So I might um, polish that off and figure, figure that out there. So I don't know. I'll do the motor first and then work around that other bit last. This is a roundabout where, they, uh, where TFL fits their motor mounts. They normally put their speed controller in front and your batteries in front of that. But these um, are much heavier than the um, speed control that TFL installs so I'm going to be putting that on the side here and I'll be able to move my batteries forward and back if I need to so that should adjust for that uh, balance I just can't go too far back because I've got to put a bend in that shaft so the further back it is the more, sh more bend I've got to put in just going to pop a cooler on the motor Alright, so I've got my O-rings in there. Just going to make sure when you push it in that the O-ring hasn't started to pull back. Just think about where you want your wires, if they need to be top or bottom or whatever, when you position this. Now I'm getting to the sticker there. Makes it a bit harder. Okay, so that's on there now. So what I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of hose on here, water hose, hold here and, and blow in it to make sure it doesn't leak. I just use this fiberglass cloth, just cut bits off before I mix my glue up and decide where, where I'm going to lay it and then mix up the glue, wet it, put it on and it's done. There's probably a, a neater way to do it but this is how I do it. Okay, so the motor mount is mounted in there now. It's strong enough to pick the boat up. That's that's always my test. Uh, so we've got no problems there. And um, I've pulled the pulled the rudder off. I'm just going to mount it on that side there. The quickest way to mount a strut or a rudder, rather than uh, marking out both holes. You just mark out one hole and then bolt it up like I've done here and then drill your second hole so you're only, you're only marking half as many. Now to mount the rudder, um, having this um, rod in here is, uh, makes it even easier than normal because all I'll do is just line that up with that and then, and then drill one hole bolt it in and make sure and then make sure it's straight and then do the second hole you don't even have to mark anything if I was building a boat from scratch this wouldn't be in here I'd always do the the rudder and the strut first and then figure out my servo but because I'm just moving it it makes it a real easy job 
Okay, so I've bolted the motor in now. So now I'm up to putting the um, stuffing tube in. So I'm just going to be putting a, a slot in here. I'm not going to bend bend the um, stuffing tube inside the boat. It's just going to go straight down and then come out and wherever it needs to be to be level with that is where the bend is going to be. So I'm just going to use a straight edge to see where it's going to exit the boat. Let's put a mark there. So just using the drill bit. It's going to be about here. So it, it doesn't matter um, if you cut this too big. You're going to have to cut it bigger than you probably think anyway because of the angle it is. Um, but you know you're just going to seal it up with fiberglass anyway. Okay, so there's my slot. Just remember the less, the smaller this slot is, the more you have to bend this. So um, just go maybe a little bit more than you think you need to. So that's dead straight there. And now all I have to do is just bend it about here so it runs straight to there. And I'll be using heat to do that. Pipe benders don't work with this thin stuff. So I'm just going to heat it up with a flame and bend it. I might as well show you bending the pipe. Um, so that's where I want it to be bent for the bend to start. Just going to take a guess on how far it needs to be bent. Um, so that's where it's going to be. That's where I want the bend to be. That's where I'm going to put the heat. Got that a bit hotter than I wanted to, but it's going to be okay. So let's see what that looks like. Push that in there. And that is pretty much right because there's a little bit of play here. Um, when I hopefully you can see this on the camera, um, as I as I slide it up more, it will go higher, and I've got I've made it too long here, so I'll just shorten it from here, and that'll fix that. So now I'm just going to shorten uh, the tube. I need it to be, um, I need to leave enough room for my uh, collet to unscrew. So it's going to be about that, something like that. And you can see she's lined up pretty good. I guess if you're not used to how far a collet has to, for how much room you have to leave for a collet, just put a collet on there. And rather than guessing like I do, I've probably done one or two more than most people who are watching this video. So that's that was my guess, and that's about right. So where that line is is going to give me enough room uh, to back the collet or to back the nut off the collet here. So that's where I'm going to cut it there. Clean that up. It's going to be sitting like there, and then, and then the back of the boat's going to be nice. All right, so now it's just a matter of epoxying the the shaft in or the stuffing tube in, and to do that, you need to make sure it's going to be lined up. You do that with your cable. Don't have to worry about cutting it to length yet. I just need it to be. Uh, I just need to put it in to hold it. So I'll just rub that into the collet like that. So that I think you can see this. That is held in now. So that now I'm just going to um, put some fiberglass tape on there and epoxy that in. And I will put a, a um, Teflon tube in there later, but that's just to hold it there for now. I'll just put some tape underneath here, 
so the glue doesn't fall through. I'll just tell you on this one, um, some of these stuffing tubes go in to the strut, this or well, the stinger, whatever it may be. This one doesn't, but the uh, Teflon Teflon liner will. So when I cut the liner, it's going to be cut, you know, up to about here, wherever the, wherever the bearing for this is is going to hit on that, and that will keep it positioned. Some of these sort of come out further and what I like to do is put a bit of heat shrink over this and over this part here but on this particular type you can't do that because it's not a tube on that side okay so while that epoxy is uh, drying I'm going to figure out how much I'm going to shorten my cable by so I've got the cable pushed all the way in um, I'm going to see how much room I'm going to use on here on my propeller and drive dog and washer first thing I'll do is I'll chuck a washer on there these ones I like to use are actually a three piece uh, washer two washers there and a, a bearing on the inside like a ball race so they take quite a bit of room you've got to cut the cable longer than you would if you were just using a uh, Teflon washer It goes in the middle. Goes that way. Okay, so next thing I need to know is where I'm going to be grinding my flat for the grub screw on this. So just uh, find a prop. It's always going to be about 25 mil, but we'll just do it properly. Just do it from scratch. So just tighten. Tighten the grub screw down. That's going to put a mark on there that I'll grind in in a second. But what I need to know now is the distance from the back of here to here. I'm going to allow just a couple of mil as well on top of that. So that measures 200 and. What we got here? 207. I'm going to cut 205 mil off. That leaves me 2 mil um, for a gap behind the washer. So I've probably spent, you know, what have I done? I've put the strut on, put the rudder on, bent up the stuffing tube, and epoxied it, epoxied it in. I've probably spent an hour doing this, so nothing's hard, nothing's you have to really think too much about. It's all pretty straightforward. Just think about what you're doing. I got halfway here and realized I didn't bring any tools to adjust the angle of this so it might be a short run um, it's not gonna be that fast anyway it's on 4s with a 6s motor I've got no idea the size of the prop that I need so I've taken a guess there too plus this lake's not very big probably good for 100 k's an hour before you're gonna hit the bank but I can't see it doing that today. Let's see what we got. Steering.
Gee, they're picking up on one side. Whoa, nearly lost it. Ah, definitely have to adjust that turn fin. I wonder if I can bend it by hand. <laughs> 